on our 3D effects shading tab, first thing we want to see is the shading mode. And we've got three different types. We've got Garo, Fong, and Flat. To show the differences, I did similar to what we did in the last video. I grabbed three shells, made our default object specific, then I changed the second one to flat and the third one to spherical. Then I copied the same row down two more times. And instead of the default shading mode, I made these three, Fong, and the bottom three, flat. I know the LibreOffice development team probably spent a lot of time on the color tone and the way the light is reflected off our 3D object and little triangular surfaces, but I don't see a significant difference between the modes of shading. I'm sure it would be more noticeable if I had different shapes, material, or lighting. I'll put this document out on the website in case any of you want to download it and play with it. The next thing on our list is the shadow. So I copy this page down and clicked on the shadow to each of the 3D objects. And these look a little like spider webs. So what I did was I did it again with spheres. And to turn on and off our shadow, select it, click on the shadow icon, and we can see in the preview the shadow disappears in this case. And I click Assign. That turns it off. Same thing to turn it on. Just click on it and click the Assign button. You can also change the level of degrees. Zero is the default, and we see at the top, zero gives us the longest shadow. The maximum is 90, and that's the light source is right overhead, giving us the smallest shadow. And we can use any number in between. I've picked 45 for my middle row because that was the middle number. The last thing on our shading tab is camera. We've got distance and focal length. The camera is a virtual camera, and the distance parameter can adjust the distance between the camera and the 3D scene. The default distance is the size of the object, in my case, 1.2 inches. I've also done the minimum, which is a distance of 0.01, and a maximum of distance 100. There's not much of a difference when changing the distance, and with the larger numbers, even less of a change. Meaning, there's a bigger change between 1 and 20, but you probably won't notice a difference between 30 and 100. And the last one on this page is focal length. My default focal length is 3.94. A smaller focal length, like we see here at 0.02, will be more of a wide-angle lens, whereas a larger focal length, like we have here on the right, will simulate a telephoto lens. And this focal length does seem to have an effect on our shadow. The last thing I want to talk about is this update button, and this can be found on all of the tabs. This update button works very similar to our format paintbrush. Before we start going there, let's take a look what we have on the screen. This object has 24 horizontal by 24 vertical. In our preview, it changes color and shows the 24 by 24. When I click on the center object, we see that this one has 8 horizontal and 6 vertical, and we have our flat normals. And in this last one, we've got our spherical normals, and we again, we've got the 8 segments by 6 segments. These shapes down below that are the blue, these are the default shapes off our 3D object toolbar, and these all have just the default settings. The first thing I'm going to do is click on one of the colors, like this green, and then click on the Format Paintbrush, and then click on one of the shapes. And we see that turns green, and it looks like it brought down all the properties. But if I click on the red one, which has the flat normal setting, now I'm going to click on the paintbrush, click on the sphere, and we see it brought down the color, but not our settings from our 3D effects. To get the settings from the 3D effects, I'm going to undo these two. Now I'm going to select this red with the flat normals. Click on our update button. With that set, now when I click on the sphere, when we look in the preview window, 
we see flat normals with eight and six segments. If I want to apply these to my cylinder, I click the Assign button. And I can keep assigning this until I uncheck my Update button. When I uncheck this, now when I click on a shape, it takes the shapes settings into the preview. I'll do the same thing with the green sphere. I've selected it. Now I'm pressing down the update button. Now when I select my cylinder, we have the green sphere in the preview window. Clicking assign, it brings in the settings from the green sphere. Clicking on the cone and assign brings in the settings from the green sphere. And the last one, I'll bring over the yellow sphere. When I click on that, we see that the green sphere settings are still in our preview window. To get rid of those, I need to uncheck the update button. Now we've got the yellow sphere. When I click on the shell, it turns to the shell because I only unchecked it for the green sphere settings. I never set it for the yellow sphere settings. So I need to go back into the yellow sphere, turn on our update button. Now when I select my shell, my preview window has my yellow sphere. Turning that on shows us that we don't have the double sided. I'll turn those on as well. And lastly, I'll click on the box and we'll notice this one has the yellow in the preview, but it also has our double sided turned on. Thank you.